hello there. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to be rude. I just, I don't get visitors out here very often. It's um one of the perks of living so close to the forest of torment, you see. It's that uh, no one really comes here unless they have to. Although you don't, you don't look like you're chained up and being forced through here. What exactly are you doing on the road? And all on your lonesome? You're very far from any of the cities of the undead, you know. <sighs> look at you. You look right exhausted, don't you? You know, why don't you, uh, why don't you come inside? For just a bit, we'll get a spot of tea. Perhaps maybe a bite to eat, if you're so inclined. Yeah, you can warm up by my fire. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure you have somewhere very important to be, but um, I'm sure you would actually get there quicker if you take just a moment to sort of recharge. Besides, there's few things in this plane or the previous one that's nicer than sharing a nice couple with someone, don't you think? It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. Why don't you just come inside for a moment? I insist. That's a good little one. All right, come along. It's all right, it won't take long. One for you, and uh, one for me. There, we'll just let those steep for a bit, and we'll have a nice cup of together. How's that sound? You know, sometimes in this plane or the previous one, I find that all I need after a difficult day is a nice warm cup of tea, brewed the right way. especially when you have someone to share it with. It's been quite a while since I have. So, thank you. <laughs> I'm actually rather glad you got lost in the woods outside my house. Now, um, uh, forgive me for asking, but when was the last time that you had something to eat? <laughs> you don't remember? That's quite a shame, isn't it? I mean, I, I know you technically don't have to eat when we're down here, but um, there's some sort of comfort in it, especially after what appears to be a quite of a, a long journey. Can I interest you in something to eat? Yes, I'm actually a rather good cook. Would you like a pie? What? Oh, no, there's, there's nothing unusual about it. Oh, I know some people like here like to mix things up and have something special that you couldn't necessarily have in the mortal plane, but I like to keep things simple. You see, I wasn't a very good cook for most of me human life in the mortal plane, but um, down here, after I, you know, paid my dues, I was able to take quite a bit of time to practice. So I'm actually quite good at it now. Would you like one? What kind is it? Apple cinnamon? What'd you think it was? <laughs> no, I don't much have a stomach for meat pies. Not anymore, anyway. Uh, help yourself, please. Yeah, you don't mind if I have one, do you? Kid, quite enjoy these. A pie is one of those things that. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Yeah.
I enjoying that. Yet, wonderful. Glad to hear it. You really look like you could use it. Just hits the spot, doesn't it? After a long day. It sure does. You know, tea's probably probably ready. Nice cup of tea warms the soul, don't it? Well, whatever soul we have left down here. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but whatever we have inside of us, a good cup of tea can reach it. <laughs> you know, I um, I don't get too many visitors all the way out here. Most people don't come here unless they have to. You know, it's um. Not exactly the most pleasant place to live, I suppose. So what exactly are you doing out here? That's fair. You don't have to tell me. Who am I? Just some strange woman you met in the forest of torment. <laughs> Hopefully you were at least mostly on the path while you were traversing these trees. Kid. That's where all the um, particularly nasty demons like to live. Yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't want to go traipsing through those trees. Not without, you know, having to. Which, you know, almost makes it even more peculiar that um, you're out here. Yeah. I don't remember the last time I had a visitor. Especially one from... The undead instead of just some demon lurking around looking for something. Very peculiar. This isn't working, is it? No, I suppose not. Well, it was worth a shot, I guess. Is that better? Yes, I um, I suppose my little guys there wasn't really working. I thought that perhaps if you met a kindly old woman who wanted nothing but to help you, that um, you may open up to her. But I see that you've become rather suspicious of the residents of this realm. Honestly, it's uh, not too surprising. I'm sure you've been met with quite a lot of hardships since arriving here in the astral plane. The astral plane is not somewhere that was meant for mortals. Not once they're still living anyway. Still clinging to the pull and all the problems of the mortal plane. No, this is supposed to be a place of sanctuary. For those who have passed on, not someone like you. So I'm sure that yes, you've had quite a difficult journey. Oh well, you're here now. Now, oh, I didn't actually say who I was, did I? I am the astral goddess. Nice to meet you. Welcome to my domain. Now. If you don't mind, would you would you like to tell me what exactly a living person is doing in this realm of mine? I mean, I am a goddess. If if I liked, I could just extract the information from your mind. But I would very much prefer to have a civilized conversation. It would be much better for you anyway if we did. So, if you don't mind, how exactly did you get here? Fascinating and uh, rather unfortunate. That's not meant to happen. <laughs> no, blue demons they they do siphon away negative energy from you living beings. But I've never heard of one 
accidentally portaling a living being through with them. That's, um, no, that's very much not how that's intended. What exactly did this blue demon look like? Oh, her. Hmm. She is one of the more powerful blue demons. Seeing as the blue demons are the most powerful of the demons, I, I take that you understand my meaning when I say that she is quite powerful. Although I do believe that that was completely a mistake. I don't think that she's ever done that before, and I highly doubt that she would be aware that something like that even happened. <sighs> it's quite the predicament, though. You see, I can't just portal you back. It would be rather simple if that was all it took, but even as a goddess, there are rules that I must follow. You see, I am the goddess of the astral plane, but there is a goddess who is more powerful than me. The Lady Fate. Yes, you've heard of her. <laughs> That's my mother. <laughs> you see, I am in charge of this place. But I have other sisters who are in charge of other domains within the mortal plane. And we are charged with keeping the balance of our particular homes. But my mother, the Lady Fate, she reigns over the balance of all. And she has certain ways of doing things and certain rules that even we as goddesses are not supposed to interfere with. Hmm. What? Oh, you've been trying to find a Lazarus flower, have you? You must have heard that old ghoul's tale then of that mortal who made a deal with someone to come to the astral plane and then couldn't find his way home. Yes, he did. He found something called the Lazarus Flower that made him appear dead and then he could be portaled home by, by someone else. Yes, I suppose that part of the tale is true. But I believe that tale also tells all sorts of fascinating adventures of him traveling through the astral plane and overcoming all sorts of insurmountable odds in order to make it to the pit of despair and find one of these magical Lazarus flowers, right? That part, unfortunately, has been now exaggerated a bit over the centuries. He was not exactly the adventuring type. In fact, he was actually rather pathetic. No, um, he did not go on these amazing adventures and journeys in order to overcome the dangers of the astral plane. He, well, I found him, I suppose, looking very, very sorry for himself. And, um, yes, getting rather drunk at a place called, what was that place called? It's a little bar in the Grey City. Yeah, he never even made it out of the Grey City. Someone alerted him, and alerted me to his presence, and I came and uh, I created the Lazarus flower for him. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not a flower that grows naturally in this place. See, that part of the story, I, um, I suppose I allowed the rumours to spread, saying that there was this magical flower that grew along the pit of despair, and it was supposed to deter anyone from ever trying to find it. Because as you see, the pit of despair is, in fact, the worst of the worst places here in the astral plane. Nasty business, really. Now, I'm sure being a goddess of somewhere that has such an awful place may seem a bit um, crass. <laughs> may make me seem a bit heartless or cruel. But really, it's all just about the balance of life and death and um, good deeds and bad. If you're an awful person in life, then you have an awful fate once you get here. It's not me dictating that, it's just 
the way it is. There's a balance that must be kept. Anyway, I thought that um, people saying that the Lazarus flower grew by the pit of despair would mean that no one wanted to go there. Although I honestly never imagined that another mortal would ever come here. But here you are. Hmm. So what is it exactly that you want? You're not here for any of the the benefits of the astral plane, I hope. You just want to get home. I can respect that. <sighs> All right, little living person. You don't belong here anyway. Although I, I suppose I will see you eventually in the future, but it's not your time yet, is it? All right, fine. Close your eyes for just a moment and let's see if we can't procure another mystical Lazarus flower for you, shall we? Here we are. Lovely, isn't it? Quite aesthetic for this place, don't you think? Anyway, I um, I suppose this will do what you wanted it to do. There is, unfortunately, other ingredients that you need for the potion, but they're um, far easier to come by. Oh, someone was already procuring those for you. Well, aren't you a lucky little misplaced being then, aren't you? All right, well, I suppose if this is what you've come for, then this is what you should have. No need to go to that nasty bit of despair. Here you are. Is there anything else that I can do for you while you're here? You'd like to speak to a particular ghost? <laughs> well, ghosts work a bit different in your realm than they do in mine, so I can't just snap my fingers and make a ghost appear. Well, I suppose I could really, but I don't like doing that sort of thing. I'm not, I'm not the sort of goddess that I want other people to do my bidding, exactly how I want it done all the time. I um, I like to give people the freedom to be who they want to be. I suppose. Do you know where this this soul is anchored in the mortal plane? All right, well, I suppose once you return home to the mortal plane, I could give you something that would help you contact them, if that would be useful to you. All right, here. This little silver flower it may not look like much, but if you set this into a pool of water, or just a little bowl of water or something. Chant the name of the spirit that you'd like to contact, and they will appear. Not very long, and if they want to, they can leave of their own fruition as soon as you contact them. But if it's someone who also wants to speak with you, then you'll be able to contact them, at least for a bit. I hope that it's worth it. Sure. Yeah. Least I can do, I suppose, with the trouble that you've had in my realm. Anyway, where is your friend exactly who's procuring this potion for you? The Grey City. It's quite a journey, isn't it? You journeyed all the way here. All right, well... I suppose I can do one more thing for you and uh, hope you get back to the Grey City quite a bit faster. Does that sound good? All right. Then why don't you just close your eyes and think about the Grey City. Let's see if we can't expedite your journey a bit.
been very interesting meeting you, little living creature. It's been quite a while since I've spoken to someone with so much life in their eyes. Not that we don't have different energies and things here, but it's a bit special what you experience in the mortal plane. Even if it is a bit silly, all the things that you worry about while you're there. It's important to you at the time, so it's important. Like I said, we will most likely meet again, but hopefully for your sake, not for quite some time. At least to you. To me it won't feel like much time at all, but hopefully you get a nice, full and fulfilling life on that mortal plane of yours before we meet again. Well, I hope that your time at our plane wasn't completely awful. Not entirely, at least. Hopefully you'll at least have some pleasant memories of your time here. Well, fare thee well, little living person. We will meet again. Someday. Someday. Someday.